England, along with what the rest of what we know today as Europe, was a landmass where all, or close to it, identified as Roman Catholic. It wasn't until Martin Luther, who was now a dedicated monk, posted his 95 theses through the doors of the church in Wittenberg, that the people began questioning the religion, its leaders, and what it meant to be a Christian. Thus started the Reformation, and, like a domino effect, each kingdom began seeing its people choosing sides and rebelling. It became the ultimate battle of Catholic versus Protestant. It was like Skywalker versus Skywalker, dark versus light, the battle of the ages, and all the people had some opinion or another on what religion should rule. But it wasn't until 1527, when Henry VIII of England made a request to Pope Clement VII that he needed an annulment for his marriage. See, his wife at the time, Catherine of Aragon, couldn't produce any heirs. And in 16th century England, that was not good news. He needed an heir, and quick. So he calls up Clement and requests a divorce, to which Clement says, absolutely not. To which Henry replies with, well, fine then, I'm making my own sect, and I'm getting a divorce, and that's that. And that kind of set off a major shift in England. See, there are Protestants and Catholics, but at this point people were still kind of confused about what it actually meant to be a Protestant. Also at this time, not everybody's completely on board with this whole Protestant thing. <laughs> like Thomas More, for example. The Lord High Chancellor of England was not for Protestants. He was completely against Luther's theologies and even refused to sign a letter it's penned in 1530 by England's leading aristocrats asking Pope Clement to annul Henry's marriage. Thomas was no stranger to debating with the king. He even quarreled with him over heresy laws. See now, but Henry was hearing none of it. He officially broke from Catholicism in 1533, creating a new sect wherein the only real big difference is that divorce was allowed. After that, the power for the church was removed from the hands of the Pope and the clergy, and now the church is run by Parliament and the King, which was great news for Henry. As divine ruler, Henry is calling all the shots in regard to the Church of England. A year later, in 1534, he is deemed supreme head of earth of the Church of England. Now more, well, this didn't settle well with him, and he refused to acknowledge Henry as supreme head, and refused to acknowledge his divorce from Catherine of Aragon, which, might I say, kind of sucked for her big time. Most of the people held a lot of sympathy for her, and she still regarded herself as a true queen and wife of Henry, although he only acknowledged her with the title of Dowager Princess of Wales. Shortly after, she was banished from court and spent the rest of her days until she died in 1536 at the Kimbolton Castle in England, so life for her was kind of not great. Anyways, back to more. Now, with Henry as divine ruler and king, he didn't have to put up with anyone's crap, so he had more executed in 1535, with him saying, I die the king's good servant, but God's first. Good man. Uh, moment of silence? <laughs> nah, moving on. Well, we all know that a real takeover is not there if there's not destruction and fire! In case you didn't get that, it was a series of administrative and legal processes that dismantled monasteries, priories, convents, and friaries, leading to uprisings all across England, with the most famous being in Yorkshire in October 1536 to protest Henry's break from Catholicism, the dissolution of the monasteries, and of the chief minister, Thomas Cromwell. Now, think about this for a second, right? If you're the king, would you just watch around with your arms crossed? Well, no, you'd fight back, With right? stern rules, because you're the king. So, to ensure uprising could be contained, the parliament passed the six articles. Mm, that was nice. But then he died. He's a good man. Moment of silence. After all of this, the prayer book rebellion rose in Devon and Cornwall over the release of the book which described the theology of the English Reformation. Now on to the fun things. Cat, Cat fight! <laughs> okay, not really, but it probably would have happened. You never know. See, Mary was supposed to take over for the public, but the public did not really enjoy the idea because, one, she was married to a husband, and two, she wanted to bring back Catholicism as a main religion. Which she did in 1553. Fun fact, she actually gained the name Bloody Mary for her executions of Protestants. Now, lucky for the people, they had a hero, Elizabeth I of England. Taking the title of Supreme Governor, she reinforces Anglicanism and kicks Bloody Mary out. At the same time this is happening in England, well, the New World was new craze back then. Spain, the leading force, had boats coming in with raw materials that would benefit them a lot in the upcoming wars. With the help of Francis Drake, Elizabeth took hold of some ships with the materials enriching Britain. See, King Philip was not enjoying the pirateering of his ships, so he sent the Spanish Armada after Britain in 1588. Now walk in the park for our queen. Okay, not really, but... Anyways, Elizabeth was a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. See, she didn't marry. <laughs> and that was fun and all until her death in 1603, with no heir. 
Since there was no heirs, Charles V took over. It would have been fine and all if he wasn't an authoritarian who wanted everything for himself. Well, he didn't last long with the help of Cornwall. He raised a new cavalier army composed of parliamentarians. The army was raised partly by veterans, and all the men had to have strong Puritan beliefs. After years of fighting, finally Europe settled a bit, and most nations signed the, the Peace of Westphalia, which was a series of treaties signed between May and October 1648 in the Westphalian cities of Munster and Osnabrück. So where does that leave us today? Well, now the main religions in England are still Catholicism and Anglicanism, but there's a growing population of Muslims, Hindus, Orthodox, Greeks, and more.